on the show, I'm Yemi Adebayo. And of course, it has happened. This is where we all want to be. We are gathered in the words of Thomas Bach, the IOC President, International Olympic Committee. That is Thomas Bach saying, this is what we all wanted to see. Not the way we wanted it, but we're here. And that's the good news. The Olympics officially declared open in Tokyo by Japan's April uh, Naruhito. And of course, all the dignitaries were there from uh, the French President Emmanuel Macron to the US First Lady uh, Jill Biden and uh, some other dignitaries. Less than 1,000 people in that Olympic stadium, apart from uh, the athletes representing the, their country, was properly scaled down. But well, we're not discouraged with all of that. The Olympics uh, begins in full effect after it has been declared open. And that's how we we'll start the show tonight. It will get our thoughts on the show uh, a lot of the time. We'll be dedicated to the Olympics. There's nowhere else to be uh, than to just sit back, relax, and enjoy what we have on offer for you on the show. Thanks once again for joining us, all right? So uh, before I move any further, let me introduce my partners to you. First, let me start with my colleague Austin Okon Akwan. He joins me tonight as we take a look at the Olympics and every other thing sports related on the show. Thanks for joining us on the show, Austin. Sports greetings to you. I mean, it's good to be on the show. All right. Uh, let me bring in as well um, a, fr a friend of a friend of the house, Alfred. Okolibe, he joins us uh, as we, uh, on this special day, uh, when we start with the Olympics. Greetings to you, Alfred. Thanks for being here. A very good evening to you, Yemi, Austin, and the rest of the guys. Um, really excited. The Olympics is off the ground. So the talk of, of the plug being pulled from the Olympics, um, that is over. We are up and running. All right. All right. Well, so let's move on on the show. Where do we start? Let's talk about the beautiful display that uh, we all witnessed today. It was, uh, I mean, it was a beauty to behold. It was just good. Uh, the drone shots, the, um, the, the lights, the color. I mean, I'm lost for words to describe everything that happened in and around the opening ceremony. I mean, take a look at your screen, for instance. These guys put a lot into all of this. I wasn't expecting anything less but words fail me to describe some of the amazing things that we saw today. The fireworks, the lights, the combination of effects, the, the display, all amazing. Uh, I don't know if you feel that way, Austin, but right here, I'm lost for words already. Some sights and scenes from uh, this opening ceremony. And then it's it just painful that the fans, the spectators aren't there to witness this spectacle that Japan put up for the 20, Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And the moment Naomi Osaka lit that flame, huge relief for the IOC and the organizing committee of the Olympics right there in Tokyo, Japan, because they've been through so much, you know me? And these lights, as those lights, in, you know, kept happening, I was saying to myself that uh, it would bring some level of hope that, yes, the pandemic did not uh, destroy the Olympics fully. Yes, it's been difficult, it's been tough, but here we are with the opening ceremony uh, in all of its glory that the, that the Olympics represents. Just look at that beautiful lighting. And if you see the number of drones that were up in the sky, 1,824, to mm -hmm. tell you that Japan was actually ready to give us a colorful opening ceremony. And it did just that. And the fireworks too. Makes me remember the real 2016 Olympics. I just kept you know, going back and I was saying to myself that by now you would have seen pictures everywhere, tourists from different parts of the world, spectators, you know, relishing the moments of the opening ceremony. This itself is as big as, you know, the Olympics itself. But it is what it is. Um, it's, it's, it's not what it used to be, but I'm glad that we still had the opening ceremony today. And with that, let the games begin. Yeah, that's the line. Let the games Begin. Let me go to Alfred. I mean, Austin has talked about the drones, 1,824, uh, 1, send the lights. We've seen everything uh, put, put together. And for me, words fail me to describe how amazed uh, I am. Uh, but for you, how do all of these things make you feel? I didn't, to be honest, I wouldn't have expected anything less from uh, the Japanese uh, authority, given their level when it comes to 
uh, technology and deployment, the advancement they've made in automobile, in electronics, and things like that. I, I mean, these Olympics was one that was built, that was, you know, they, when they were pitching for this, they leveraged on uh, that technological advancement that they had. And yes, I think uh, the fans not be there, didn't dampen any, anything as regards what we saw today. It was a spectacle, the true sense of the world. I think for me, this has been building up the absence of fans from grounds and the rest of them. Uh, it's, it was for me more like waiting for what they are going to offer, now, given the different scenario that we have this time around. And I don't think they're disappointed. They, they did put up a show worthy of an Olympics. Yeah. Um, like All I right. said, a huge relief, a huge relief that the plug is not going to be pulled on this one because a lot of talk about that. Uh, we're looking at the numbers. If the numbers spike, we might say, okay, everybody go back to where you're coming from and the rest of them. Now the games have started, some events have started, and hey, the, the show as it is must continue. Yeah, it must. Um, I, I don't want to spoil the moment, but of course, um, you know, before the opening ceremony, protesters were out in their numbers. Before the opening ceremony, they came out. But nobody's talking about protesters anymore with this beautiful opening ceremony. <laughs> I guess nobody is talking about them, but we, but we must say, um, you know, that they were out. There's still some dissenting voices. But uh, Alfred, I want to quickly talk about the Japanese emperor, um, Naruhito. He was there, officially declared the games open. Uh, his grandfather was in this kind of situation in 1964. His grandfather was the emperor at that time. But it was a moment where the world was happy and everybody was together. It was a different feel for, for him being there. I mean, less than 1,000 uh, people uh, were there and definitely it wasn't going to be the same experience. No, definitely. Um, like I said, um, Austin did mention uh, pictures uh, that would have gone viral now. People would have had their own perspective in terms of what they, what they see. And I, I can assure you that it's not just um, the official coverage will not give you just everything that happened at, at, at the Olympics. So uh, that human angle to it, each individual writing their own story in terms of how they perceive, how they see the Olympics, that is a little for me that is, is missing. It, it's a different scenario. The world has changed since the advent of COVID. And, and to that extent, you don't expect the Olympic Games as it is to remain the same. I saw, I was, I was looking uh, through the match past and hardly could I recognize one or two, except for um, uh, our, our table tennis player, uh, Aaron Okwadri, and Odoan Adekuri, that we were told that we were going to be our flag bearers. Uh, I was struggling to recognize any other person on, on, on that place. And so that is the that is same for everybody. Uh, it's a different view. Um, like I said, the, gov the, the government will say, okay, it, it, it's, it will be a huge relief that these games have started, uh, despite all of the uh, calls and protests around the world. Right? Uh, for me, um, all the talk about fans being there, not being there now, for me, it's irrelevant because we've known before now that um, this is definitely going to be a different relief and as much as we can enjoy from, um, um, from how, how we view this time around. All right. Enjoy it how you can, where you can, however you can. That's the only thing we, we, we can do. Um, Austin, let me, let me come to you quickly. You already talked about Naomi Osaka, the honor that was given to Naomi Osaka to be the one to light the Olympic flame. I remember in 96, as young as I was, Muhammad Ali, Atlanta, it was given that honor. And a bit of a story for Naomi Osaka. Four or five years ago, no one would have thought that uh, this young lady will be the one uh, to be doing this. And at that point, the world was silent, was watching every step she took as she's climbed the step to light this. What an honor. And also, it makes us talk about the power of sports. I know, Yemi. Beautiful story, you know, got me emotional. A young talent, Naomi Osaka, uh, you, you said it right, four or five years ago was talking about it. And it's coming at a better time when we're saying that, you know, sports has the power to transform lives. You know, Naomi Osaka in the last month and what she went through pulling out of a major competition. And now she has this rare opportunity once in a lifetime, you know, a memory to, you know, light up the, the Olympic flame. And look at how the lamp came up and how it opened Japan, showing us that, look, 
uh, but for COVID, we're ready to give you guys an opening ceremony that you remember for a lifetime. I'm super excited that this uh, that this opportunity fell uh, on Naomi Osaka, and it will not just be for Naomi Osaka, it will inspire young talents that, look, you can be whatever you want to be, you know, and this is Naomi Osaka's story, you know, last two, three years, that's where we're talking about Naomi Osaka, and now she's, she is the one that is telling us, look, uh, let the games begin, it's beautiful, I love it, when I saw that it was Naomi Osaka, I was like, this is good, I hope that All this right. week, even inspires some more to bounce back and then give us breathtaking tennis, I love the story. All right. Let me stick with you, Austin. Um, let, let's talk about the impact of the solidarity shown by world leaders, um, all of them, from everyone that we've listened to has supported this. I mean, you, in your picture, you saw a French President Emmanuel Macron, uh, U.S. First Lady Jill Biden was there. I mean, Macron was busy waving to the French athletes, and uh, you saw how excited um, uh, the wife of the uh, United States President was. So, what, what impact do you think the solidarity that Japan got from these world powers, the backing that they received, how, how, how much of an impact was it in the successful opening ceremony that we've seen? It transcends beyond Japan, I mean, it will make this world a better place. I think one good thing COVID-19 has done for us is to let us know that we love, we can conquer any sort of, you know, uh, issue that, that comes on, um, on the face of the world. So I, I love the fact that everybody didn't turn back and start saying, oh, why can't Japan just, just you know, abandon the games? Why can't they just cancel, you know, despite the incentive voices? It was important for these world leaders to come, you know, show some love. You know, see, very, very important. They showed good empathy uh, because it could have happened to anyone. And Japan lost so much money. Just the postponement, one billion US dollars lost, you know. So it was important for them to heal. They needed support. So world leaders came together. I've been doing a research on sports diplomacy. And I tell you, sports yeah. is one major tool that can be used to unite this world. Yeah. And that's the message that All has right. been passing to us, that the Olympics mm -hmm. can heal the world of everything that we've been going through here. All right, I agree with you, Austin. We need to go on a break right about now. Alfred Okolibe is still with me, still have Austin, and we'll talk about uh, everything about the Olympics. We'll shift uh, focus and talk about Team Nigeria when we return from this break. All right, welcome back. Let me go to Alfred quickly and um, allow Alfred to have his say on the solidarity that we've seen, the world powers all uh, backing uh, Japan. Of course, some will argue that uh, 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 Japan itself, it, it's in that block. Maybe that's why they're receiving that solidarity. But like Austin said, and a lot of people said, that solidarity was key because no one uh, ever spoke of telling Japan to uh, you just pack it all up and let's forget about this. I mean, it just tells you that the world is um, united in the fight against them. Um, um, uh, COVID in terms of the impact that it had globally on world economy. Everybody was struggling. Everybody felt the impact of this. And at every point in time, what the world was thinking of, how do we restart our lives? How do we go back to a semblance of normal? And I think sports played a very key role. Uh, sometimes um, the, the effect was huge, psychological effect. People could no longer to go to work. People could, could no longer fraternize as they used to do. Um, sports just gave a leeway and uh, behind closed doors they started. I think it's one of the first major um, aspect of our life that I started first. And at the moment it you know it now became that Japan was going to host this one. At every point in time they were getting the kind of support that they wanted. Despite all of the challenges and um, the health concerns, the fears and the rest of them, I, I mean for the for everybody in the world, the thing is, we just have to go back to our lives. We have to get our lives back, and sports just kind of offered that. And who is better place at this time to really lead that charge? I think it's Japan. The Olympics is the single biggest sporting event in the world. Almost every part of the world is representing the Olympics, and that Olympic um, spirit of universality of um, uh, camaraderie of um, you, you know this is the only uh, that we have uh, people coming together is um, uh, when you talk about the power of sports it cannot better be exemplified than what we're witnessing uh, through the Olympics. 
Yeah, that's it. Um, I agree with you. Everything you've said. And uh, I hope that beyond COVID, we'll have the kind of solidarity uh, with ourselves and our sports will continue to lead the light, uh, show the way that it can be done. Let's uh, focus on Nigeria. I think about what happened today, uh, blood smiles on our face, an event that most people would uh, easily write Nigeria off uh, after round one, we're still in it. Our athletes, uh, of course, talking about Esther Toko in action today. Well, not the kind of position a lot of us wanted, but what matters is she still has a chance to, um, you know, do something. She's, uh, she came, uh, she plays fifth, uh, with the time that you have on your screen, the event women's uh, singles uh, scores, it's one. Uh, she came fifth. So she advanced to uh, uh, another side of the event. We'll see what happens, whether or not she can uh, pick uh, something in that one. But let's look at uh, the itinerary of Team Nigeria. Let's see what's going to happen tomorrow. There you go. Uh, okay, so uh, b before we go to um, what's going to happen uh, tomorrow. I think it's only fair that I allow the guys say a thing or two. Uh, I want you guys to make it fast. We have a lot of ground to uh, cover. Let me start with Austin. Uh, how does this make you uh, feel? You know, like I said, an event that you would easily write Nigeria off. Yeah, um, it tells you that we still have a lot to do. I, I remember uh, when our channel's television started, you know, putting spotlight on the sports. A lot of persons, they would know that we used to do it. Rowing, for instance. Uh, at the 2016 Olympics, remember, I mean, it was Chia Rika Okogo that, you know, got us talking about the sport. Now, uh -huh. it's Esther Toko. Tells you that we have prospects in it. At, at, at the start of the heat, she was having the lead time, and then she dropped. More work to be done. When you go to the Olympics, you compete against the best. So federation, they are taking notes. Where are the ways that we can improve? You know, and with that, we might just get better. Let's wish her well for tomorrow at the replicate. She might just, you know, improve. And then uh, we never know. This is the Olympics. You never know. You never know. Um, Alfred, uh, your, your thoughts. Uh, seeing her alone makes me happy. Uh, I, don't care about the, I don't care about the outcome. But, but then if, if you're competing, it's, it's very sweet when you win. I, I particularly like um, the motivational um, words that um, the coach shared with her. I, 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 I watched this video over and over and over again. And I think what the coach did was come to our level. The simple basics. You don't need to look back. What you need to do is to challenge the person closest to you. I, I was listening to Andrew was saying all of this in, Vana, do I say, in our own language, in the language of the street that she can understand. That, for me was true motivation. That was, that for me, was reaching the essence of this athlete. And I'm not surprised that she came back. I, I mean, if this would have been, um, I think it was Chika Chumiriji that interviewed after this event, and she said she has learned a lot through all of this. When she goes through the upper chart tomorrow, hopefully she will be able to pick one of the quarterfinal uh, tickets. That will be my expectation. But I think this exposing her to this and um, you know passing through this day, giving her another chance to see if she can qualify is something that we should be excited about. Yeah, something we should be excited about, and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed if she can move to the next uh, level, like Alfred said. Let's look at Team Nigeria's itinerary for uh, tomorrow. Let's see what's going to happen. I'll read through. I'll just try to scan through what we have for tomorrow and for Sunday. Then I'll allow the guys to say ten or two about it before we uh, talk about uh, some other things. Well, in badminton, you have the men's doubles and you have two of our athletes will be uh, involved. Uh, Olufua Godwin and Okpayori Juwon will be up against uh, their opponents from Japan. Uh, also, talking about uh, the uh, table tennis, that's the next uh, uh, next uh, event. What you have on screen is badminton, the, the doubles. Uh, and, uh, two of our players will be involved, and that's going to be tomorrow, J Saturday, July 24. So uh, that's it. Uh, wish them all the best in that one. Let's move on and uh, talk about what you have on your screen. Table tennis, men's singles round one. You have our own Omotayo uh, Olajide uh, will uh, be in action uh, in that one, and uh, he's going to be up against uh, Apollonia Tiago. So, uh, wishing him all the best in that one. So, uh, let's hope 
that he will be able to emulate some of the things that Aruna achieved the last time out. And I'm off young will also uh, be in action in the women's singles round one. She uh, will be in action and we're hoping that she will get the better of our uh, opponent, Madara's Dora. Uh, that's who uh, Adam Offian will be up against. Let's also uh, talk about uh, Old War Horse, uh, Olufunke Oshinaike. She will also be in action in the women's uh, single. Uh, we're done talking about Adam. Uh, let's move on to uh, Funke Oshinaike. She's also going to be in action. She will be up against uh, Lu Juan from the United States. Uh, well, this is what is getting a lot of people talking. The men's uh, basketball event hopes very high now uh, because of what the guys have been doing. So uh, we look at the men's basketball men's preliminary round uh, in Group B. There you have it. Uh, Nigeria will be up against uh, Australia. So uh, all the best to uh, Team Nigeria. The location is the Saitama Super Arena right there in Tokyo. All the best to the basketball team of Nigeria. And we're hoping they get to make us proud when they play. Uh, their game is on Sunday. And so all the best to uh, the boys. All right. So let's... Uh, uh, before we leave it all together, uh, Alfred, quick one. Uh, you, you've you seen the itinerary, you've seen the events. What are your expectations? Uh, what do you hope to see uh, in table tennis, in badminton, and in basketball? Uh, a lot on offer for this weekend. Well, um, I think um, Olajide is um, uh, uh, it's got me excited. I think he's a young, talented player. He has, um, for me, living in the shadows of uh, the more illustrious and um, elder brother, um, our own Africa's um, best TV tennis player, I don't know, look, um, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's time for him. Um, I mean, I don't know, I think it's time for him to come out of that shadow, to be a man of his own, to uh, some of the things we've seen him beat, I don't know. A quadri in the Nigerian Open, and I think he can replicate that kind of performance at the global stage. Uh, this first round game offers him that opportunity. That of the women, I'm not too sure. Them, a few of them, and uh, it will be a surprise if they go beyond the first round for me, um, given the dominance of the uh, Egyptians in uh, um, African table uh, African table tennis for, uh, for women, and um, for the big one, the basketball teams, they've let down the marker. Those um, those games that they had, those preparatory games that they had against the United States of America and Australia, has um, really crossed them. Uh, Argentina, okay, that uh, against United States and Argentina, yes, they did have against Australia. They will have to repeat that. Um, uh, perhaps maybe raise their game. At some point, I thought they kind of dropped their shoulders when they played Australia. This is the real stuff. This is the real deal. And um, it's nice to know that um, the latest one of the players. The one who won the NBA uh, that everybody is talking about, uh, Jordan Wara, is in Japan and has joined the team. And hopefully they should be able to, you know, um, they're no longer that other team from Africa. Like um, uh, one of the players did say, Gabe Vincent did say, uh, when he was um, interviewed, he said um, for him, he the, the team represents a continent and not a country. I think they have to take that, um, though, that responsibility yeah. of uh, representing Africa well. Um, right. It's our biggest prospect for now. Eight NBA players in that roster of 12 players. I think that's huge. Just go out there, do your very best. Um, and we'll be looking for them on Sunday morning. All right. Okay, let me get Austin's thoughts. Uh, um, Alfred is quite confident. Uh, it doesn't matter to Alfred that the Australians have beaten us. So, you know. But anyway, l l l let me listen to Austin. And um, <laughs> uh, let me listen to Austin and what he has to say about what... Uh, um, the sporting events Team Nigeria will be involved in over the weekend. We have badminton, we have table tennis, we also have um, basketball. Let me, let me begin with um, badminton. I, I like the, the the partnership that Godwin Olofua and Olao Luakpo Peyori have shown over the years um, with badminton. They have played against themselves in the singles events. They formed good partnership 
Hit the doubles. I'm hoping that that will work for them. Badminton gives me so much joy, and it would just be good if these guys can just, you know, go out there, play with some level of confidence, and, you know, advance. For some sport, I don't even want medals. I just want them to get the required exposure so that it can motivate the federation to do more. And badminton uh, is one of those sports, same as rowing and canoeing. And if you go to table tennis, table tennis, yes, um... It's been a topsy-turvy ride, I always say, for table tennis in Nigeria, particularly with women's table tennis. Olufunke Oshona Ike will be going against Luan Yuan. Luan Yuan, she, she's of Chinese descent, but she's representing the United States of America. Olufunke Oshona Ike is ranked 175th in the world. Yuan is, is ranked 449. Olufunke Oshona Ike is 45. Uh, Liu is 36 years old. So you see, one way or the other, experience and... Quality of play favors Olufunke or Shona Ike. She just needs to go out there and just be herself, do what she has to do, and I believe she can get out of that preliminary round. I'm a bit worried about Edem of Young because she's going against an Hungarian that is so good. She's ranked 66, and Edem of Young is ranked 163. So the 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 the, 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 the odds favors the Hungarian, but hey, this is a world of sports where anything can happen. And Adam of Young can attack when you least expect her to. So I'm rooting for her also. Olajide Omotaya, what a story. After beating Aaron Okwadri at the African Games, I said to him, go out there and conquer your world. I still talk to him and I like the confidence that he's beaming. He's saying to himself that he can make a difference. Four years ago, this guy was almost getting into depression, thinking about leaving table tennis. But what Aaron Okwadri did at Rio 2016 sparked some life into him. And look at where he is now. He's an Olympian already. So he can take that story, motivate himself, and go do something. You know how I feel about the D-Tigers. First thing, for anybody that's talking about the D-Tigers, put some respect to that name. They are ranked number four in the world. Hello? They are ranked one, two, three, four in the world. So the Boomers, the Australian basketball team, they, are, they have that in mind. We have played them. Coach Mike Brown is a strategist. He might give that, you give that game a different approach and... Look, it's a world of sports where anything can happen. Just be optimistic. Go out there, be yourself, play your game, have fun, and you might just get the results. You might just get the results. Uh, that's that's a good place to to leave it. Uh, all the best. We'll of course we'll be back here next week to to X-ray what's happening with Team Nigeria. We can only wish for the best. With uh, uh, the team has done its part there in Tokyo, and wish them all the best. Uh, that's that'll be our last spot of call uh, with regards to uh, the Olympics. We're going to take a breather when we return. We'll continue with the rest of the show. All right, we're done with the Olympics. Let's move on. Uh, the few minutes we have left on the show, we're going to um, thoroughly... Um, try to exhaust what we have uh, with regards to football on the domestic scene. Guys, let's talk about the ITO Cup and let's look at the quarter final fixtures and uh, I want you guys to correct me if I'm wrong with the results that we have now. It appears that we're, we're going to have a new name on um, the, the uh, winners. Uh, we're going to have a new team win because I don't think the teams that advanced, any of them have won uh, the tournament before but you can correct me if I'm wrong. That's the result that you have right there on your screen. Um, Canopy is losing to Sunshine Stars by a long goal. Nasawa United beating Gombe United. Uh, same score line. Rivers United, <laughs> same score line really uh, in the three games. Then um, Gateway United uh, from uh, Ogo State uh, played a one all draw in regulation time. Obayasa United at the end of the day from um, the penalty spot, spot kicks uh, used to uh, decide who won that game. So, uh, Gateway are out and Bayelsa United uh, in the, the true to the semis. So, let's take a look at the men's semi-final fixture. Sunshine Stars will take on Nasarawa United. You have uh, Rivers United will also take on Bayelsa United. Let me quickly go to Alfred and, um, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, also uh, take a look at the results and uh, we look forward uh, from uh, the semis. For me, um, I think the teams from the NNL has, have they've done well. Um, quite a big scar of clubs like uh, Gateway claimed that of um, um, Aqua United on the verge of winning the MPFL. Uh, for Bayelsa United, the eliminated Rangers, uh, they just 
kept going and going. And this time around, they had the semifinals of uh, the cup. Can we feel us back for them? They lost uh, this. This was a cup they've keeping for like two years now. They represented them Nigeria, the continent, back to back. And at uh, this time around, unfortunately for Kukusa and the boys, uh, this is where it's all going to end. I think this year's format, um, yes, you can complain for all you know, for all you like, uh, is something that is different. Sunshine Stars for me is having one, one, what the hell, one hell of a season. They are flying in the cup. But in the league, they have to struggle to remain, you know, to maintain their premiership status. And that's a big worry for them. Coach Ayane has done a fantastic job with that of uh, the team. They were at the verge of um, being relegated when he took over from Bengo Mbote. And he has turned the fortunes of that team around to think that they play in the semi-finals on the verge of uh, playing on the uh, on the continent because the winner of the competition will play on the continent. And I think that's a huge incentive. On the other hand, Maintaining their premiership status uh, last weekend against Katina United, what I thought the, if they had had the three points in that game, it would have just helped them you know, just breathe a bit easier. But they, they drew at home and it's uh, not a good one. And for me, that's been an exciting ride. Barca United for me, they must be doing something, um, but something special. Some of I looked through some of the team list, some of the players that are in that Barca squad, time tested players who have played in the league. For a long time, you know, finding their way back to Yenugu and teaming up with Barca United. No wonder they are that um, uh, they've been that um, uh, um, very very uh, yeah. consistent. And now they're in the semi final. Rivers United, um, still an outside chance in the league. Their result against Aqua United did them in because um, they didn't get maximum points in for that. So uh, this is another opportunity for them. They are in the semi finals, right. and I mean, big game mentality at this stage. They know that um, two good wins and, and, and they're on the continent. All right. So um, that's our, uh, Alfred's take on uh, the ITO Cup. Let me get Austin's take as well. Um, Austin, bear in mind, we're about to go on a break. But, but let me get your thoughts on um, the results. And, um, I mean, going forward, what do you think will happen? Good result for Sunshine Stars and, of course, Bayosa. Uh, United, uh, because Bayelsa United, they, they've been giving us the sort of run that you expect them to, you know, go all the way, and they're giving the NNL a good representation. Uh, but for Sunshine Stars, I just believe that they can use the ITO Cup to forget the sorrows of the league and, you know, get some good standing, you know, for themselves. So, uh, that's about it for me. Semi-finals will definitely get us talking. Nassau United on fire. Uh, Rivers United also, they are doing well at the moment. There's some setback that they're having in the league. So, um, semi-finals definitely will get us talking. All right, thank you very much, Austin. Let's go uh, on a break uh, right about now. When we return from that break, we'll take a look at the Nigeria Professional Football League. Then we'll also uh, talk about football transfers. We'll talk about uh, Jordan Sancho. Uh, he's completed his move to Manchester United. We'll do all of that when we return from this break. Uh, welcome back. We're on the home stretch. Let's take a look at uh, match date at the five in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Let's see what's going to happen. And um, you have Aqua United up against oh, already um, relegated uh, Jigawa Golden Stars. Aimba will be up against uh, MFM, the Lagos team. Plutu United uh, will take on Lobby Stars. Casino United take on Dakada FC. Damar United take on Rangers. Heartland will take on Kuala United. Warrior Wolves will take on Wiki uh, Taurus. All right, let me let me go to Alfred. Uh, I, I need you to do this for me uh, quickly, if you can. At this point, the focus is on who's likely going to win. Yeah, Pierce, it might, it might um, be Aqua United. So let me ask this way. What do you think they need to firmly secure the title and your candidates for the drop? Uh, for me, Aqua United just needs to keep winning. They have six points pushing at the top of uh, the, uh, the six or five points pushing at the top. They just need to keep winning. Their opponent, Jigar Golden Stars, um, not yet confirmed for the drop yet. Um, so, uh, and they are also fighting relegation. But I think Aqua will be too strong for them. Just keep winning. Uh, four games to go. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all good for them. Uh, what are like one candidate? You talked about teams for drop. One candidate for the drop is Sunshine Stars, and they play Nasrawa United this uh, weekend. Nasrawa United for me has been, um, for me, 
my team of the season. They've um, at the verge of being relegated last season, saved only because their no team was relegated, still playing the Premiership. But they turned out a different team this season. One striker, Silas Onwankwo, he scored again in the cup today. He scored the only goal that took that got them to the semi-finals of uh, this of uh, the cup. And it's just last, he just kept each game. National United plays. You look at the score and you see a certain Silas Onwankwo either scoring or providing the assist. So he has, uh, for me, the striker of the season, the most consistent, has scored the highest number of goals, not being penalties. And for me, I think he's um, been the re- revelation of this. Season, so now I'm not sure. Nasra United, they know that second place is up for grabs, and that second place will end your opportunity of playing the Cup Champions League. And I'm not sure they will show any favors at all to Sunshine Star. That can put Sunshine Stars in a bit of um, struggle. If Anyoba drop points, they couldn't win against anybody at the weekend. Big struggle for them. They will be on the road this weekend. So that it's except for Adama United between Warri Wolves. If I knew about Sunshine Stars, it's just all piled up there. It's all uh, Chicago this time, just piled up there. And any of any of any two, three of them can join them, can join um, what's it, Adama United at the, at the drop. And Adama United have an opportunity. Okay, their season they are confirmed. And the host Rangers this weekend in Gumbi. I don't know whether Rangers too, who are trying to turn around their season can um must enough courage to maybe get maximum points in that game. All right. Uh, so uh, let me just, you know, switch and ask Austin same question. Um, what do you think Aqua United need? A lot of people feel that they are champions in waiting. Do they need just one more game? Two. A lot of people are saying they have two two home games to play. So whatever happens elsewhere, if they win the two home games, then your candidates for the drop. Yeah, but, and I and I keep telling you know um, in my in my write ups about the league that. It's, it seems so close yet so far for Aqua United because you cannot afford to be complacent at this stage, you know? And the mid Jigawa Golden Stars, the only good thing about that fixture is that it's going to be played at home for Aqua United. Jigawa Golden Stars, you see the way, yes, shambolic officiating against Rivers United, but you could tell that everybody is playing to avoid the drop. So you cannot afford to be complacent with those sort of things because those are potential banana skins and they can hurt you. So Aqua United needs to be focused 100%, particularly with their home matches. Win those ones and see how you can get points away and then uh, you could be on. At this stage, I mean, as a team, they need to avoid stories that touch. You know, so just go out there, do the business. Against Warrior Wolves, they did that business 3-0. They need to do the same against Jigawa Golden Stars. I'd like to see what Nasarawa United will do to Sunshine Stars. As Alfred said, Nasarawa United, they love the fact that we're talking about them. And so they're giving us reasons to talk. Silas Wankwa, despite that game that they lost to Lobby Stars, it was a fight. They kept fighting. They lost 3-2. It was, it was that Nasarawa United that scored first through Silas Wankwa. He got a brace in that one. They lost 3-2. He has scored 16 goals so far. Nasarawa United, the solid miners, are the highest scoring team in the league so far. And they love it. So they're going to want to keep that going against Sunshine Stars. On the flip side, Sunshine Stars have their destiny in their hands with that match because they needed to get the job done against Katsina United on March Day 33, and they didn't take it. That game ended goalless. I'm sure they're still beating themselves. So they need to believe against Nasara United. Warrior Wolves, Wiki Tories also. Very important game because Warrior Wolves, they are also fighting to avoid the drop. So I don't see how that we go. Heartland right. came off a very, you know, fantastic result in the Oriental Derby against uh, Rangers. So against Quara United, I'd like to see what they can do. So these are the good times for the league. Where it's rounding up, but giving us more reasons to talk about it. And I love it so much. Yeah, I love it too. Uh, before I let you go quickly, let's talk about Jordan Sancho. I need a quick response. Everything is done now. Um, good signing. Your opinion? Good signing, Yemi. And I think it can it can turn his it can turn his career around because of the setback at the Euros. It's teaming up with Marcus Rashford now. This is a deal you always wanted. The fans have been looking forward to it. So uh, come and, and then prove to us that I really want to, you know, you know, get it going. So I feel it's a good, it's a good, it's a good um, uh, signing for Manchester United. Okay, awesome. I think that's a good place to leave it. I want to thank you for your time on the show uh, tonight. We'll do this again next week. Always a delight to be on the show. Thank you so much, Yeah.
Yeah, uh, that's it, uh, our friend, uh, also, our colleague, uh, my colleague, Osno Kunakman. Let me go to Alfred as I prepare to wrap things up on the show. Uh, your parting shot, Jordan Sancho, good signing. Your opinion? Well, I think um, he's an English talent. I don't know whether uh, coming from Germany um, to England, um, the pressure and focus will be on him. Whether he can be able to I will stand up for because that, um, uh, that's what worries me. But he wants to play for Manchester United. He calls him. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, given the way the Euros uh, ended for him, I think he didn't care the deserved playing time. Um, okay, playing time that he deserved. Uh, okay. I just turn all that around for Manchester United. Manchester United looking for inspiration from anywhere. Right. Uh, let's see if Jordan can offer that. All right, let's see if Jordan can uh, offer that. Uh, Alfred Kuligbe, uh, that's a good place to leave it. I want to thank you for your time on the show uh, today. Looking forward to doing this again next week. <laughs> thank you very much, Jamie. It's a pleasure. Uh, All right, so that's, uh, that's a wrap on the show uh, today. We do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to bring uh, to you. I implore you to enjoy your weekend. We'll be back here again uh, next week, next week, Tuesday, to be precise. Enjoy your weekend. We'll do this again some other time.